Hey everybody, it's Scott Simcoe Spring Service and today we're going to be working on a Chalmers suspension. The customer is doing a safety on it and he noticed a hole was rotted in one of these brackets. So we're going to cut the bracket off, we're going to fab up a new one and we're going to weld it back on. So this is a rubber suspension, so there's your rubber donut. It's got your restrictor can on top. It sits on a plate, which sits on the beam. The beam goes to axle to axle. And if you actually look in here, it just kind of floats. It's hard to tell. But the beam just floats in between the axle and everything's held together with these torque rods. So there's the hole we were talking about and the customer doesn't like that. The whole bracket's getting nice and thin. And uh, it's kind of like a support for all these little braces and stuff like that. So we'll cut that out and we'll replace it. And make it all new again. And then this is the other side. I'll probably just show you the one side because it's going to be the exact same thing twice. But you can see it's all caved in, collapsed, and needs some new uh, components welded on. So essentially the way I cut these apart, I'm actually going to go inside of here and just lop this huge chunk right off. That'll get the bulk of it gone. Then I'm going to trim around the outside edge here, all the way around. And that should get it so that there's just going to be little square plates left up here. And then I'll just take the torch and I'll just kind of melt it away. And I kind of have a rule whenever I'm cutting something apart where I always try to destroy something completely and save something else. So we're going to save uh, all these brackets and components and stuff like that. And then this whole box is just going to be a melted puddle of slag when I'm done. But first thing I got to do is I got to go in here with the air chisel. I got to knock all the uh, rust off of here so I can actually get in there with the torch and cut it properly. So ironically, you need it clean before you can slice it. So let's just air chisel it and go from there. All right, there you go. You can see we actually opened up that hole a little bit more. But we just got to replace this whole can here and just get rid of all of it and put new new parts in there. It'll make it a lot more stable. So now we can go in with torch and slice it all apart. Yeah, something I forgot to tell you guys. So what I'm cutting, so I'm cutting here. We got all these rubber bushings here and it's gonna be like half an inch away from where I'm cutting. So what I'll probably do is do super quick cuts and I'll go back in there with some water and I'll squirt on it to cool it back off again because I don't want those bushings burning. I don't feel like taking this apart and redoing it. I think these bushings are about two years old, so we want to save them.
So you can see here, I left about a half inch. So what that does, it allows me to just lop the bulk of it off and then I can go back in there and trim it back a little bit further. I find if I take too much off, it's hard to get it heated up and trimmed. If I leave about a half to quarter of an inch thickness, then I can actually get in here with the torch and get it hot and get it off there real quick. So this gives me, gives me some material to chop up. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around all the edges. We're gonna trim this back in here, trim around here trim this entire ledge off and stuff like that and get it pretty much flush to base metal. Go from there.
Okay, the bulk of it cleaned up. Got one tiny little nick there. I guess that's not too bad. I'll probably end up filling that up with weld anyways. So now I gotta get these caps off of here. And it's hard to see, but if you look right there, you can see there's a seam. And when I'm cutting around these brackets, I'm looking for that seam in there. And if I can see the seam where the two pieces of metal meet, and I work my way across that seam, then when I go to cut the plates off, there should be almost no material left holding, like all the weld will be cut off and gone. So, kind of my top tip for the day. But yeah, we'll get those trimmed off and then uh, the rest of the stuff will just hit with the grinder and peel it off. It's not a big deal. Not a whole lot left. So I went and I split in behind the plates like that. So I'm hoping I can just take my air chisel and just pop them off right now. If I cut enough around them, they should just come right off. If not, we'll have to go back in and cut some more off. Let's try it. I didn't think so, but it's always nice to hold. <laughs>
I think that was a pretty good cut. So now what we'll do is we'll go in here, we'll clean all this up, get this all ground and prepped. But yeah, basically, if you can see right here, it's going down to the parent material and cutting everything except for it. So we're back down to original material. I'll take the grinder and I'll grind it back to the original material and then we should be able to slide our plates right in there and weld them in. And it should look brand new again. So I'm gonna do some grinding and I'll come back and show you where we're at. I keep forgetting that you can get these really cool masks for if you're a supervisor or YouTuber and you need to actually talk, you can just flip it open and then talk and then... We're back to grinding again. Well, Mike's finishing up all the grinding on there. Uh, I drew up this little drawing and I sent it off to the fab shop. So we're gonna go down there right now and pick up some steel. So I just showed up at the steel supplier and I wanna take you inside and kind of show you some of the equipment that they use. They got a big eight foot shear and they have a uh, brake press, plaza table, bandsaw, a few other things like that. Equipment's so big that it could never fit in my shop. So uh, whenever I have stuff and projects like this, I always, uh, come down here and have them fab it up for me. So worst case scenario, I'll take a couple pictures and I'll show you exactly uh, the equipment that they use. Um, all of our trailer lift blocks are made here too. Uh, we get them to band side out all the blanks for us. And uh, it's kind of nice having access to a place that's like 10 minutes down the road. And it's pretty awesome. I've been working with them here for like almost 15 years. So it's kind of nice to have that kind of reputation and rapport to be able to, you know, help each other out like that. So we fixed our trucks and they plasma cut out steel for us and shear stuff and bend stuff for us. So it's pretty cool. So here's their big eight foot shear that they use to shear some of the steel. And here's the bandsaw that they use. Uh, it's an automatic programmable bandsaw and what they can do is when they cut the blocks and it automatically feeds it in whatever the programmed length is and then it'll reset and cut another block and reset and cut another block and so on and so forth. It's pretty awesome. It's kind of nice having a fab shop that close by. Couldn't really film as much as I wanted to in there, but it kind of gives you an idea of what kind of tools and equipment they have. Uh, it's nice to have access to it like 10 minutes down the road. So, so I got my pieces of steel bent up. So what I'm gonna do is put them together, make a little box out of them. It's really nice having access to that kind of machinery, especially when I have almost nothing in my shop that can make this type of stuff. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean up the edges, put a couple of chamfers on there and get it ready for welding. Oh yeah, perfection. perfection. A little square on there maybe. It's pretty close. You can't really complain about that. <clears throat> I might just tack it right there.
want to get a nice little angle on there. <clears throat> I could get some light in on there. There you go. Not bad, not bad, not bad. I'll take it. Doing better welds uh, inside than outside. But yeah, one down. One to go. There you go. Looking pretty good. I figure if you can lay your best welds out on something like this, you can lay your best welds out on something that's more important. There's a couple of burrs in the corner, so I'll knock them off with the grinder and get it so it's nice and square and smooth and flat, and I can put it... I can put it right up in there, and it won't have these little bump outs, so we'll knock them off of there. Get it all cleaned up and ready for install. I'm not a huge fan of how I have to put this thing together. You're going to have to... Do one of those. Tack it place. That side's gonna be higher. You got your welding helmet there? There you go. And then what I'll do is I'll just Alright, that's good there. Give her a tap. Nine sixteenth center, five eighths center. Not bad for eyeballing it. All right, let's uh, put some real welds on there.
And for the weld I like the least, see if I can lay a good one in today. call mid welder let's give her another shot should really brush out these welds but Can't complain too much. Not horrendous, not my favorite weld to do. I think that one looks pretty, it's just covered in smoke. doing next <laughs> fixing the other arm we'll cut that out fix it up but yeah not bad I'll take that all day long all you got to do is fix that one little bracket throw some paint on her and call it a day and then we just got this side to do something for tomorrow so there you go everybody, nice little weld job. Um, I don't normally do welding like on wheelbarrows and shovels and lawnmowers and stuff like that, but when it comes down to suspension, I don't mind doing it. There's not a whole lot of guys that know the suspension good enough to be able to weld some of this stuff. This stuff is extremely easy, but it's kind of cool that we can do it here in our shop. So anyhow, have a good day. Hope you like this. Catch you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment. If you have any questions, put them down below. Hopefully I can answer them for you. If anybody has any tips or tricks on how to do overhead weld better, let me know. All right, take care. Have a good day.